wetlands are one of the world's most valuable ecosystems. As well as providing a rich habitat for plants and animals, they also clean our water, store carbon and help to reduce flood risk. But across the world, vast swathes of them are being lost. Here in England, 90% of wetlands have disappeared over the last 400 years. Hi Sylvia, how are you? Derek, good Hi. to meet you. Derek Gow is a British farmer who's concerned about the way the countryside has changed in recent decades. What we do with the land up here is a huge impact on how people elsewhere in the landscape live their lives. Mm -hmm. Policy has always been that you drained the land, you used it for agriculture, you used it for roads and towns and settlements, for whatever human um, purpose you wanted to think of. But what that essentially meant was that we were creating a landscape that was, that was going to become drier and drier and drier. This soil doesn't look it today, but it's actually dry and compacted and can't absorb much water, meaning heavy rains flow straight over it, leading to floods that can devastate towns and cities downstream. If we're going to have any kind of meaningful relationship with water, what we've got to do is we've got to look at holding it on the land, and then once that heavy rainfall is, is over, we release it slowly. You know, it's a case that we can go on playing this endless game of wishful chicken with the elements, where we can actually grow up and realise we've got to do something about it. Derek has recruited his neighbour, John Morgan, to help restore the area's wetlands. Well, we've got a very secure fence to begin with, Sylvia. So, right, OK, well, let's go and see if we can find some, some field signs of what we're looking for here. Well, look, there's a... You see the path through the, the rushes here? Something's obviously moved through there. Vegetarian animals come along and it's taken these side shoots off. And as soon as we get into this bit of woodland, this is what we've been looking for, that funny pattern. Wow, look at that. On the willow there. Is that teeth? That's teeth. And that's been created by a European beaver. Beavers were hunted to extinction in Britain in the 18th century, when their fur was in high demand for hats and their scent glands for medicine. But the massive rodent once played a crucial role in shaping the British countryside. Before the beavers were here, it was a tiny, narrow stream flowing through uh, an area that was completely overshaded by willow. Beavers build dams across streams to make a network of pools to live in. Since Derek released these beavers onto John's land in 2011, they've created a brand new wetland here. This is the beaver channels that connects all the dams. They're fairly yeah, deep. They're deep enough for them to swim wow. in. Wow. Okay, well, this is sphagnum moss, and it can hold up to 60 times its own volume of water. Wow. Yeah. So you have a flash flood above this, um, and this absorbs it. It's like yeah. a big sponge. This is the dam. It this doesn't really look that solid, but it's holding that huge water mass yeah, in well, and stopping used, it from escaping. They have used one of these trees that's fallen over. OK. How long would it take them to make a dam like that? Well, they've been here for just over two years now, and it's only the two beavers, and that's what they've done so far, but this is just one of 12. You can really see why they're called nature's engineers, can't you? You can, yeah. I mean, it's just an amazing ability, isn't it? And of course, <laughs> as John said, they'll use some sort of natural structure that's there, yeah. like a fallen tree, block that, then raise it, then widen it, mm. all the time stabilising that water and holding that water. It's a much more effective way of managing water in the upper watersheds and cleaning water than anything we've ever devised. There's a beaver there. There's one right there. Oh, wow, look at that! Oh. His big flat paddle-shaped tail, oh, look at that. webbed hide feet, completely adapted for life in the water. <laughs> They're such funny creatures. As well as building natural low-cost flood defences, beavers are what's known as a keystone species meaning other wildlife depend on them for survival. The life that you now see forming around this site simply wasn't here until the beavers came, and the beavers have created the living space for them. The North American Indians used to call the beaver the, the Earth's kidney because they managed water. And of course, the kidneys were the source of life. And have you become quite fond of them? <laughs> the beavers? Yeah. Well, I can get fairly close. I've been within a foot of them. That's a yes or no question, um, John. The answer is... <laughs> yes. Yes. You love them, don't you? They're your babies. Well, I've spent far more time than I should do up there, to be quite honest. <laughs> Derek Cope's beaver wetlands will appear around the country, and today we're preparing a new beaver enclosure on his farm. Derek, why are we fencing these beavers in? We're fencing these beavers in because, at the moment, we do not have any functional licences to release them in England. 
The idea of reintroducing beavers into the wild is still controversial here, and Derek hopes that sites like this will help people understand the animals better. Right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to create kind of a central soft inner chamber for a, a, an artificial beaver lodge. When we put the beavers in, we don't want them going straight through this. They have to stop, think about what they're doing, and they'll gradually start to orientate themselves around the area they're going to live in. You've got to bear in mind that they've got like a pair of bolt croppers on their face. So for a beaver, <laughs> none of this is any great problem. Once it puts its mind... Derek, what does it mean to you to be a farmer? Because this isn't necessarily what an ordinary farmer would be doing on a Thursday well, afternoon. Well, our, nation, our relationship with the land from a farming point of view has changed hugely. I mean, now we view the land from a tractor. And when it comes to it, you know, this idea that, you know, George Orwell um, illustrated of agriculture being a long, slow conversation with nature is not that anymore. Um, so, you know, this is a, it's almost a kind of form of re-engaging, if you like, with, 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 with what this landscape should be. But also, these wet areas become areas where we manage water, and the water becomes another crop we produce. Is this ready now for the beavers? It's pretty much ready now, so all we need to do is go and put them in a box and bring them down here. <laughs> so how big are these ones? For that size, they're babies. This is the beaver shed. This is where the beavers are. This is one of the beavers we want to catch. So... Oh, look at them. You just wait here for two seconds. <sighs> Are you seeing that? Whoa! Right. You just stand here. I really don't want it to bite me. <laughs> it won't bite you. <laughs> Maybe um, if you knew we'd built it such a nice house, you wouldn't be so reticent. <laughs> I doubt that'll count for much. I've got it. The high scale web. So, um, come on, we went. Oh! Okay. <laughs> you just have the net there. You want me to hold this down? I want you just to hold that down. Okay. Don't let out of the net. I'm okay. going to go and get Rebecca and we're going to get a crate and we're going to sex these beavers. Sex the beavers? So I've been left here on my own to look after this beaver until Derek gets back. He's just gone to get some help. It's friends behind me and they've got really sharp teeth, so I'm hoping it's not going to make a rescue attempt. So when you're saying you're sexing them, you just mean you're, you're working out what gender they are? You're, yeah, absolutely. Well, what did you think of me? <laughs> I don't know. What is sexing a beaver? Right, OK. <laughs> so put it, put it aside. Derek imported his first beavers from Bavaria in 2006 and this will be the third pair he's released onto enclosures on his farm. So we pop them down there. What's that? Pop the other ones out. No. Just jump over the wicket. These two beavers have important work to do. As the climate changes, heavy rains and floods are likely to become more frequent in the UK, meaning we need the flood-reducing services of their wetlands more than ever. I don't think you'd ever normally get them behaving like this, but because it's not used to the environment, it's just sniffing around, and it's really amazing to see it so close. Beavers have already been reintroduced in other parts of Europe, and Derek hopes that soon they'll be set loose in the wild here. It's, it's been really lovely watching them swim around and explore their new home. How does it make you feel when you let them go? Well, it's nice, isn't it? I mean, they should be here, and. You see them in a setting which is entirely appropriate. I mean, beavers are part of our, our, our country's natural ecology, and the fact that we, we killed the last of them 250 years ago is but you know, a blink in time. So, you know, they should be here again, and it's quite nice to think that these will settle in here and they'll breed, and that perhaps at some point in the future their babies will be released into the wild. Mm -hmm.